Welcome to this talk about Linux Secured Integrity, a very fine boot concept for embedded systems. But before I start with the subject, uh, I will give you a short introduction about my person. Uh, my name is Holger Dengler. I uh, was working, uh, I'm working for uh, Linotronix in Germany, a company that uh, focused on uh, embedded systems and real-time and my focus area in this company uh, is security of embedded systems and I joined them uh, last year. Before that I was working for IBM in Böblingen also with the focus on security and uh, mainly the hardware support for the cryptographic hardware in uh, uh, the, the Linux so support for the cryptographic hardware of the mainframes. So I'm a little bit familiar with the terms of security and uh, the mechanisms there. And yeah, okay. So the agenda of this talk will be, first of all, we will start with the problem statement. Why are we uh, sitting here and uh, thinking about security of embedded systems? And because of the, uh, the importance of the boot process in this question, we will uh, focus on the classic boot process first and then on the verifying boot process. And uh, after that, I uh, give a short overview what is uh, available today, mainly in, uh, in U-Boot. We did a prototype with U-Boat and uh, at this point, thanks to the U-Boat team and especially the colleagues that uh, built in the uh, security functions, it's good stuff and it's ready to use and yeah, thanks for that. Uh, after the status quo, we come to a short conclusion, a summarize the, uh, the whole stuff and uh, give an outlook uh, what can be done and uh, where is work to do. Okay, problem statement. Why are we talking about uh, security? Why are we thinking about uh, securing our systems? Uh, as the embedded systems started in the past years, they are only connected to the entities they control. So we have only a controlling system and it's connected to, it, uh, to a machine, complex machine, and uh, doing stuff with the, directly with the machine, and that's it. So in the, the systems uh, over the time, uh, will uh, be extended to, to uh, interact with each other and uh, also uh, interact with uh, central components like a control center. So as in this, uh, in this picture, uh, the control unit, uh, control unit of uh, machine A uh, interacts with uh, the control unit of machine B and uh, they exchange data and uh, after that they also transfer the data to the control center. So for, for that purpose, we need to connect the control units or the embedded systems together. And uh, if you have only two or three uh, entities that you need to connect, you can do it via uh, direct connectivity. Uh, but if you need to connect more than three entities, then it's getting uh, complex by direct wiring and expensive least. So um, uh, more and more embedded systems are now uh, connected to existing networks to reduce the cost of uh, wiring uh, the units uh, directly with each other. 
So, and uh, they are not only connected to existing networks, sometimes they are also connected to uh, public networks. And so, uh, it's also possible to easily access uh, the data on the control units. So, control units no longer only control the machine. They also collect uh, production data and provide it to other applications so that you can uh, monitor your uh, your machine from your desk and uh, access the data from there. So, but uh, the more comfort you get in accessing data, the more comfort uh, also an attacker get to attacking your control unit. So, uh, we all know that servers and uh, personal computers are uh, subjects that uh, can be uh, of interest for attackers and uh, we have some uh, security mechanisms on our laptops and our servers to uh, protect against such attackers. And uh, if we connect our embedded systems and control units to uh, public networks, we also have to take care about the uh, uh, security mechanisms in these units as well. So we all know the control units uh, run also Linux and uh, are no longer uh, reduced systems. They are more or less uh, full functional uh, computers uh, in, in this time and uh, so they can also be uh, the goal of an attacker and uh, yeah, if the attacker has the possibility to take over the control of the control unit then uh, weird things can happen with the machine or they can be used otherwise. So, therefore it's uh, important that our systems are also the, the embedded systems, the control units, uh, we have to take care of the integrity of these systems so that we know to each time, at each time, uh, which software or which processes are running on uh, these systems. And the important step for guaranteeing the integrity of a system is to uh, guarantee the or yeah to guarantee the, the integrity during the boot process if you mess up the integrity in the boot process then you are broken so this is a very important uh, step in uh, with respect to integrity to a system uh, integrity and therefore the focus of this talk is uh, mainly about uh, the integrity during the boot process so during the boot process, uh, we will load a kernel and the question that we have uh, in, for that step is, uh, who is the originator of the kernel? Who put it on my system? Uh, and this is not only a question uh, with respect to security, it may also be uh, uh, important questions with respect to safety. So it's, uh, if you think about a, a laser welding machine, it's important <laughs> which kernel is running on it, on, on the control unit of this machine. Because uh, something can happen uh, if the laser uh, control is uh, uh, going mad. So this is the first important question. The, uh, the second important question is, uh, has the kernel been modified? It's somehow similar like the, the, the uh, first questions, but uh, uh, a little bit different. We want to detect uh, violations. We want to detect modifications, malicious modifications uh, in the kernel. And therefore, uh, we need a mechanism to do that. And uh, at least we, we want to be notified if we detect such a, a modification. And 
in the next step we also uh, need a reaction, a fine reaction, uh, uh, if such a modification has been detected. For example, we can doing a fallback to a safe kernel or we can uh, stop uh, booting the control unit so that the machine cannot be functional uh, anymore and so on. And last but not least, uh, main question, can this all be done without having dedicated security hardware on the system? <coughs> Sometimes you have uh, a system out in the field and you want to increase the security and therefore uh, it is important for you to know is it possible without hardware modification for me to update my system in a way that it, after the update, has uh, a higher security level or a higher integrity level than before. Okay. So, let us first uh, look at the classic boot process. Uh, I think we are all familiar with boot process. In the first step we have a CPU initialization. After that the bootloader is loaded into RAM and executed or directly executed in, an, for example, NORFLASH. Uh, the bootloader then uh, will, in, uh, some, uh, will load uh, the Linux kernel from another place in the uh, memory and uh, then also executed and then the uh, system start is, uh, yeah, or the system starts up and uh, we are moving from the boot process to another step. <coughs> so one way to, to uh, increase the integrity or to ensure the integrity in such a classic boot uh, process uh, is to guarantee that no one can modify bootloader and Linux kernel. So that is, that's the easiest way. Uh, we can put it in a read-only memory and then we have the guarantee that it's uh, the integrity is ensured as long as no one has physical access to the system. So that's uh, uh, the one main uh, aspect of this talk. As long as no one has physical access to the system, life is much easier. As you have uh, an attacker that uh, can plug in and, uh, or has direct access to the hardware, then we are in another game. So that's uh, also not the focus on this talk today. So we are focused today only on, on uh, can we uh, reduce the damage that a remote attacker can uh, do with my system. Okay. so. Put it in a put the Linux kernel in a read-only memory, then we are fine. So, but uh, that's not um, a really a good idea for uh, public or for, for systems that are connected to public systems because uh, if I connect a, a system to a public network, then I have to update uh, the kernel and the software of my uh, unit in a regular basis because of uh, uh, yeah, providing uh, the, all the security bugs uh, and, and, and fixes for it and uh, so on. So putting the Linux kernel in a read-only memory solves one problem but it uh, causes another. I, it's harder to update the system and uh, for uh, for that reason, we need another uh, we need another um, mechanism to verify what we are loading and executing. So then we come to a 
verifying boot. Uh, we start in the same way as in the classic uh, boot. We have a CPU initialization. Uh, after that, we load and execute the bootloader. Uh, and uh, we also load together with the bootloader a certificate or a public key. Uh, in the next step, we load the Linux kernel. And together with the Linux kernel, and this is the, also a new part, the signature of the Linux kernel. So um, we are here using uh, cryptography to uh, ensure uh, the, the integrity of what is loaded and what uh, is used to verify the signature. So, so the bootloader then takes the public key of the certificate and verify the signature of the kernel, check if the kernel has this, uh, built the, the signature and, and uh, uh, checks it against what is uh, loaded from, uh, uh, from flash. And uh, if the verification is successful, then it starts the kernel. And at this point in time, we can guarantee uh, that the kernel that is uh, loaded is uh, verified or is signed and uh, uh, yeah, uh, given away uh, from a person that is allowed and authorized to do that. So. Let me uh, give you a short uh, sidestep what is used here. If you're talking about certificates, I already mentioned it. Um, we mainly talk about a, a public key. Uh, uh, and uh, if we talk about the signature, signature is a, a hash that is built uh, in, in this case uh, over the kernel and then it is encrypted with a private key, a private key that is uh, uh, from the same key pair than the uh, public key in the certificate here. So uh, who is familiar with uh, asymmetric cryptography? Okay, for the attendees they are not uh, familiar with um, uh, asymmetric cryptography. Uh, in asymmetric cryptography, you can use uh, or you can generate uh, a key pair, and with the one key, you can encrypt stuff. Uh, and for the decrypting, uh, again, so the step back uh, to clear text, you need another key. So uh, in this case, the signature can be built by a person that holds the private key and as a secret and give away only the signature. And the signature can now be verified from every person that, is, uh, that has access, read access to the uh, public key in the certificate. So that is verifying uh, the, the main concept of verifying boot process. And uh, it reduces the need uh, of read-only memory. So we only need to put uh, the bootloader and uh, the certificate uh, in read-only memory. The Linux kernel and the uh, signature can be put into read-write memory. So if someone uh, modifies the kernel, then the signature won't fit to the binary of the Linux kernel, so the verification will uh, go wrong. And if someone uh, modifies the signature, it's the same. So you, and it's it's very hard, nearly important to modify uh, the binary and the signature in a way that uh, verification can be successfully processed. 
So that's that depends on which uh, uh, which um, method you use to uh, verify uh, the stuff here. And uh, in our prototype, we are using RSA for uh, for that uh, purpose, and uh, it's uh, already RSA is already. Uh, uh, implemented and available in U-Boot, so uh, that was the reason why we took it. A question. Yes. Would it be possible to have the bootloader in read-write memory, just the certificates in memory? Yeah, if you put the bootloader in the read-write memory, then uh, we have a, uh, another problem, because the bootloader in this uh, in this picture here the bootloader is doing the verification. So if you can modify remotely the bootloader, then you can replace it with a bootloader that has no verification. Or uh, another, uh, another example is if the certificate is also in the uh, read-write memory, then you have the same problem. Someone can replace uh, the certificate and the public key in, in there with its own uh, public key and uh, with its own uh, private key it can uh, sign its own kernel and then uh, the integrity is also broken. Yes, another question? So are you going to talk about the trade-off on, on various levels here? Um, for instance, being able to replace the kernel um, versus the not being able to replace the certificate. So for some reason the certificate gets compromised on these devices due to some other some other release of information, you now no longer can guarantee security on the device with the setup. Yeah, that's that's a problem we we actually has uh, have no uh, no concept for that because uh, um, uh, certificate revocation list handling is a little bit uh, yeah more complex. Uh, and uh, to have this in a bootloader may, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, if you want to 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 uh, revoke certain certificates uh, or uh, key pairs, uh, then you need a certificate revocation list and a and proper handling of uh, doing that. And uh, certificate revocation list handling. Uh, would also be uh, here in, in, in the read-only memory uh, uh, part, and uh, because uh, no one should uh, change the revocation list, so that's that's the same than the certificate. So uh, there are certain open questions, yes, and uh, it's uh, yeah, but we are aware of it, and and then yeah. Maybe we need to discuss this, uh, discuss this uh, in the future when we having the main steps in in a proper uh, way working, and uh, then we can go to the details and uh, check what is possible. And yeah. Okay. So this is an an easy uh, or a simple verifying. Uh, concept uh, that is already uh, implemented in U, what I already mentioned. So uh, we are, can also think about um, an extended key handling. So um, the, the system key pair that we have here and at the uh, uh, left, um, this is uh, our yeah, root of uh, our uh, uh, chain of trust. And we can now, with, uh, with this key pair, or uh, yeah, with uh, the, the keys there, can build up a, a, a chain of trust. And we can put the certificate, the system certificate, uh, it's this one, uh, in a read-only. Uh, memory of the system, and um, if the bootloader starts up, then we add this uh, 
certificate in a bootloader, so-called bootloader keyring. Uh, uh, in the next step, we can load other certificates and extract the public keys uh, from there, this one, and we verify this uh, public keys uh, with the signature in the certificate. So you can also sign uh, a, a, a public key and put it together and then you have a, a possibility to ensure that the public key is the public key you have seen at the uh, signing uh, time frame. So what we have done, we took the, uh, the private key, the red one is the private key and the uh, green ones are the, the public keys. We took the uh, private key and sign the working public key and put it together in a certificate, in a signed certificate and put it also in, uh, on our system uh, in maybe the uh, read-write memory. And then uh, after the bootloader loads this certificate, it can uh, also be verified before adding it to the keyring. And if the verification goes wrong, then we normally not add it to our keyring. And with all keys in our keyring, we have now two keys in our keyring, the uh, public key of the system uh, key pair and the public key of the uh, working key pair. And with all of these keys, we can doing now uh, the signature verification uh, with the kernel. So, uh, or we know that the, uh, uh, the kernel is signed with the, uh, with the working key and therefore we took the working key from the key ring and uh, do the verification of the kernel signature. So that could be an extension, an extension of the key handling in the bootloader. Uh, it has the uh, possibility that you can that uh, you as a uh, producer of a system can give away or can uh, yeah, can give away a key pair to a developer that he can uh, sign its uh, work or you can also let the developer uh, create a key pair and then sign its keys after verifying that uh, it's a good guy and not a bad guy. Um, so that is an extension of uh, the verifying boot process that is uh, available today, but uh, it may also, it, 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 it may uh, be uh, implemented with very less effort, I think. Maybe we can talk about that uh, later. Because the, the uh, mechanisms are the same, so if I verifying an, uh, a kernel binary against a signature, or if I verifying a, a certificate, a, a public key string against the signature, that's the same mechanism, so I, I don't need uh, a new uh, encryption or decryption uh, methods, it's, it's all the same. So, if now our kernel is up and running, then we came to another uh, step in the life cycle of our system. We are leaving the boot process, coming to the system. And now we have the guarantee that the kernel that is loaded is the one we want to be loaded. And we can now uh, use all the existing stuff in the Linux kernel to protect our system uh, further. We can reduce uh, or we, we, we can restrict the kernel that only signed modules, for example, can be loaded. And so we can prevent uh, low-level kernel hacking. So we can uh, 
uh, yeah, not allow uh, another uh, uh, person to write an, uh, a kernel device driver that accesses uh, parts of my hardware that I do not want to uh, that it be accessed because of uh, safety reasons or something else. So this is one uh, uh, one possibility to uh, uh, protect my system. Uh, another important thing is to uh, take care of the um, integrity of my file system. And here I can uh, use the integrity subsystems in the kernel or uh, other mechanisms uh, that uh, are around there. And uh, I can also use Linux security modules like SE Linux or Tomoyo or something else. So uh, the fact that I has a guarantee that uh, the kernel is the one that I want to run on this system, I can uh, rely on these, all these mechanisms that they, that they are working, that they are active, and that uh, they uh, uh, protect my system against other uh, uh, yeah, modifications. The integrity subsystem EMA is part of the kernel since uh, 3.6, maybe. And it's, uh, it helps you to, uh, 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 to, to uh, guarantee the, the integrity of files by uh, hashing the file content and uh, putting the uh, the hash and uh, extended attributes and uh, verifying it and and so on. Normally, if you if you talk about uh, EMA, it's uh, most uh, in conjunction with uh, TPM, but it's not really uh, necessary that uh, TPM is in the game. Um, EMA? Yes. Uh, so uh, as far as I know, uh, the Linux uh, integrity measuring and yeah, integrity measuring architecture is the, uh, the full name, uh, is available since uh, 3.6 in the kernel. But I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe it's uh, 3.7. Yeah. We do not have it yet, but uh, we will uh, extend our prototype and uh, having it there, and then we can uh, give you more details about uh, performance. So let's come to the uh, prototype that we built. We take standard hardware, we take standard U-boot, uh, doing some changes, mainly uh, the DTS support for, for the FITEC board because it's not there uh, already, and uh, generating a key pair, doing some configuration, and it's running. So it's easy if all the work is done by, uh, by the community. So. What we now have is a prototype that uh, uses the kernel signature verification during the boot process, and if the uh, signature uh, don't fit to the kernel, then uh, the boot process will be uh, stopped and interrupted. So we have a system that only boots uh, signed uh, kernels signed by us. Okay. So the features of this prototype uh, are the kernel verification during the boot. Uh, we have the simple keychain in this uh, in this uh, prototype. Uh, 
So the public key is in the U-Wood image and the signature is located in the kernel image. And uh, we are using RSA 2K uh, keys. And uh, for the, for the um, hashing of the, of the kernel, we are using SHA-1. Yo. Okay, I a few slides back. I forgot something to, to mention, so let me go back to this picture. As you can see, uh, we do not have the necessity to put any private key on our system. So if you deliver the system, if you give the system away, there is no secret on the system. It's all only the public keys and only the stuff you delivered. So that is very important, and that's the uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, quality of uh, security. I think um, because if the if any secret uh, is on the system, then an attacker or an, uh, yeah has the possibility to uh, to introduce uh, to 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 um, inspect one system, extract the uh, secret, and uh, compromise all other systems that are relying on the same secret. So that's an important uh, um, an important quality of this uh, verifying boot process to. Uh, to have here uh, the uh, asymmetric cryptography that gives you the possibility to deliver only the public parts of your secrets. Okay, so sample uh, configuration for that uh, prototype. We have a signature. Uh, we, we have a kernel configuration. We already uh, saw a similar uh, configuration by in the talk of Simon Glass uh, yesterday. So uh, it's nearly the same. We have a signature uh, here in the kernel configuration that specifies uh, that uh, uh, secret and it specifies the uh, the algorithm that is used for verifying the uh, the signature and uh, a key hint or key name hint so that the uh, uh, bootloader or the build uh, tools know which uh, key pair is used for generating the signature or verifying uh, the um, verifying the signature. So, yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, the conclusion uh, of this uh, talk is, it is no dedicated security hardware required if we want to protect against remote attacks. As I already mentioned, we are not uh, protecting here against physical access. Uh, if we want to uh, also uh, include the uh, verification uh, against uh, modification uh, dur uh, during uh, remote uh, during physical uh, access, then we need some place where we can store safely the bootloader and uh, uh, and uh, secrets. In this case, the certificate or the public key that is used to verify the signature and um, for that reason we must re, uh, go back and, and, and use the TPM for that reason. Yeah. But uh, it's the same process so we can combine uh, the same process uh, with a security hardware if we have the possibility or if it's already on the system and we're getting a, a uh, 
a better quality or, or higher quality and in, in integrity uh, for our system. It's uh, the, the uh, concept is adaptable to your needs. So if you need more, if you need an extended key handling uh, with a key chain, then it's, it's possible to, uh, with uh, small changes, to uh, cover this as well. And it's extendable, as I already said, uh, with uh, TPM, using a TPM or other security hardware. Maybe you can also think about uh, a one-time programmable memory. Uh, if you put uh, such a, an, uh, an entity in, on your system, then you can get uh, uh, the uh, certificate or public key uh, from there, and then you're uh, at the same level than using a, a TPM. Yeah, one important uh, one important uh, item here or thing is uh, this concept is completely reviewable. You have the possibility to review and guarantee that there is no backdoor implemented in this concept. That's an, a quality or an, 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 yeah. It's a possibility <coughs> that you, if uh, you have security hardware in the game, it's mostly not possible for you. So you won't get the uh, construction details of a hardware chip that uh, guarantees you the security. So, and as I already mentioned, we have no sec uh, secrets on our system, so if someone uh, uh, take a system and uh, doing some investigation, it is not uh, he is not able to extract any secret uh, that helps him to uh, attack other systems that relying on the same uh, secrets. Yeah, and last but not least, it's already there. Use it. So if you have a system that uses U-Boot in uh, uh, version, uh, in a newer version, then uh, try it and uh, yeah, be happy with it. It helps you to increase your uh, security level of, of your system. So that's from my side. Do you have questions? Yeah, what sort of effect does it have on the yeah, so um, um, verifying uh, the signature, you have to uh, to hash the kernel. So if you're using the the verification, in, you have two possibilities. So one possibility is to uh, directly um, uh, checking the the kernel and, and uh, verifying the signature of the kernel, but you can also uh, uh, use another uh, possibility. You can uh, uh, configure that a kernel with a certain uh, hash uh, is uh, required for that uh, configuration and then sign the configuration, and that is more, uh, much faster. But uh, in our prototype, we're uh, doing the simple thing and uh, signing the kernel and signing and verifying the kernel. Uh, this uh, depends on how big the kernel is and uh, kernel size and uh, how fast your uh, processor is. In, in our uh, prototype, it took, uh, yeah. 50, 50 seconds, 20, uh, sorry, uh, half of a second. And so for instance, when you, when you buy a Windows partition, you can create an hash of it, and then you can sign the hash to fast verify the Windows part of a file system. Yeah. And you 
even doubtful with a security only reboot, no? Yeah. Or uh, you can have a security key at the device if you're a completely unsecured file system because someone completely destroyed your file mm. system. So yeah. I think uh, it's, uh, it's better to have what the important things are in read only way and assign it mm. uh, even uh, with, with the kernel or in the boot process. Yeah. Okay, so the the question or the, uh, your comment is that uh, not only the boot process need to be verified, and that's true. So the boot boot process is is one step, and it's the first step. But we also need to guarantee that the uh, uh, configuration of the uh, bootloader and uh, the file system and uh, other parts of the systems are also uh, Secure. secured or the, the integrity is, is guaranteed for, for, uh, yeah, for this parts as well. Yeah, I mean, if, even if you secure the file system and you secure the kernel, you secure the boot process, but the kernel can execute another kernel, you can reboot another kernel with another file system, so your system is, is unsecure again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, that's uh, that's right. Uh, the uh, the question was uh, uh, if we only secure one part of the system, other parts can be uh, modified or damaged, and so it's uh, it's possible to to uh, having a, an unsecure system in the end, although the boot process, for example, is is uh, verified. So it's it's important that all the steps you're uh, taking care of, that all these steps uh, fit together and uh, yeah, and, and there are no holes in between. So, uh, because an attacker normally uh, find those holes and go there and uh, then you are broken again. So it's one step, it's also the, the boot process, it's, it's one step in the game but it's an important one, and therefore uh, try it out, use it, and uh, getting familiar with it, I think it's, it's, uh, it's worth to take care about this step a little bit more. Yes? It's not clear for me why the, why the boot loader is uh, rebounded, because if we have a trusted chain, we could have some kind of boot loader upgrade that is signaled, Uh, yeah, the, the question was, um, is it possible to uh, put the bootloader in a read-write section and uh, having some uh, process uh, in place that verifies uh, the, the update of this region? And yes, it's possible, but it's also a little bit tricky. You have to restrict it very uh, uh, carefully that no one, no one can access and re uh, write access uh, this area in memory. So,
Yeah, another possibility is to to uh, use a dip switch in in your write enable uh, line of the uh, memory area, and so to update the bootloader, you need to have physical access. So I think the the uh, uh, the sequence of updating the bootloader is uh, not so often than uh, updating the kernel. So sending out service personnel uh, to the machine uh, every two years and if, po if necessary update the bootloader, that's acceptable for most, uh, most people, maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah, if, if you have other requirements, then you need other uh, mechanisms. For example, uh, if you uh, have that re requirement, then it may be a, a possibility for you to store the, um, uh, the keys, uh, the, the secrets uh, in, in your uh, TPM, for example, <coughs> and use the mechanisms there may also be a possibility. Okay, so I think we are done with the time. And uh, thank you for your attention. And, uh,